before we start uh, to go into actual um, the texturing process, I want to be I want to demonstrate the actual tool um, to you uh, instead of doing this straight onto the actual uh, model itself. So it'll be easier for us to kind of understand what we're doing. Uh, so to start off with, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on to the tool just down the menu, and I'm going to load up uh, a plane. So if you just navigate onto that, so what I'm doing here is if I can, I want to demonstrate this first on this plane, how that tool works, and then after that we can actually start um, doing this on the actual model itself. So if I go back into edit mode now and I can navigate this, I can just make this nice and flat so you can see that this is actual uh, geometry, this is actually a, 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 a there's some topology there. Um, and what I'm going to do is um, next uh, is to turn the material, uh, change the material for this so we can see the texture better so what we uh, what I use is like the skin material um, it's recommended especially if you're doing organic models it kind of projects the detail nicely and it still gives you a nice uh, enough shader to see how some of the reflections are gonna look so it is totally worth using that of course you can use the flat one as well but this is the one uh, to use if you're going to be doing this tutorial so and the thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to subdivide this model. So I'm going to go into geometry. I'm going to hit divide uh, multiple times uh, to get um, uh, to to uh, increase the divisions. Now the important part of uh, why you have to do this is because what you're actually doing is you're not painting on uh, in two D. You're actually painting in three D. So you're painting on the actual model itself. So the process itself is called polymesh 3D. Uh, sorry, it's called um, poly paint. So you're actually painting on the polys. Uh, and when you subdivide this, try to subdivide this to the highest level. Uh, I have to make this a polymesh 3D. I'll just do that later on um, um, before I show you the the actual spotlight tool. Um, so when you subdivide sort of this, uh, try to get it to the highest level. I think there's some kind of a problem with my one here, so I'm just gonna have a look at that. That's fine. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, I need to make this uh, into a poly mesh 3D. That's why it's kind of stopping me from. Uh, doing that, um, so um, I'll just subdivide it to that level, and then what I'm going to do is just continue, just to demonstrate the tool, and then when we start to texture, I'll make it a poly mesh 3D, so I can demonstrate what the objective of that is. So if you go into your texture menu now, and what we're going to do is we're going to load those textures up. So I'm going to import them in, and instead of using the combined one um, I'm gonna just use the, these three so I can demonstrate what that is so when I hit open you'll see that these appear in the menu as well so now what I can do is I can select these and uh, use them for texturing purposes so I can dock the uh, menu on the right there or I can actually just use it I, I just like to use it the way it is so I can do that so Firstly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the front view. So if you just click on that, uh, make sure it's active. Once, once it's active, if you navigate to the button just below this one here, so turn on Spotlight first of all, and then hit Add to Spotlight. So make sure you hit Turn on first, and then Add to Spotlight. Now I'm going to get rid of a light box just there, and you'll see that this this widget appears with the texture there. So one of the things that you can see straight away that it has many buttons all around um, and what I can do now is if for instance if I click right in the center uh, of the uh, widget I can move the widget around so if you click on that or you use your Wacom's tablet to press on that you can actually move the widget around anywhere within the space 
Uh, if I click in the second circle, so not right in the center, I can actually move the image around as well. So it gives me the ability to move that around. So the center, uh, the, the very small circle in the center allows me to actually move the widget. Uh, and the other part actually allows me to kind of um, move, uh, move the overall image. So this button here, for instance, allows me to scale. And this one here allows me to rotate. Uh, and wherever you have your widget, that becomes the pivot point that image uh, um, is scaled from. So of course, there's many tools there. You can there's tools there for uh, various different purposes. So again, if I if I click at any point at any anywhere on the screen, I can move the widget. So for instance, I moved it onto the nose there, and that's my point there. So th all these different tools, they're there for that reason. The other tool that we're going to look at is the transparency tool. So you can make this semi-transparent, more transparent or less. You can you can do texturing, for instance, the color correction on, on some of these textures. I do advise do it in Photoshop, but it gives you control over the kernel channels as well. Um, you can flip the image across. This one, for instance, allows us to transparency. So making it more transparent, less transparent. We're going to be using this quite a lot. Um, the other thing that you can do with this one, for instance, is um, um, just one second. Um, so you can experiment with what these are, and as you do the tutorial, you'll be able to see what the different features do, different things. But the ones that we're going to be using are them ones. So I'm going to quickly add all the, the other three images to the light box as well. So you'll see that once I've done that these images appear at the bottom there on the left so each time I double click on any of these images you'll see that that's loaded in our central space so for instance if I switch across so if I'm on this image now so this is our main image if I double click on the front one again um, that should load up uh, so um, if I, here we go Like I said um, in the earlier video, I'm, I'm the audio, the audio um, did decide to um, not work for me, so I'm kind of um, recording this uh, afterwards. So I'm just talking about the different tools there, the different brushes. So of course um, you can uh, you can flip the actual texture itself. So if you click that, it'll, it'll just flip it up, uh, vertically or horizontally. You can add a grid there, and um, you can tile these. I'm going to use these at the end, so you'll see what the tile actually does. It just positions them nicely on the left side. How many other textures are you using for that purpose? So um, I can move that around, um, and again, it's important to know and remember how I'm moving uh, the widget around and experimenting with actually rotating. Uh, the actual image as well. So we're going to be rotating quite a lot, we're going to be scaling quite a lot, and we're going to be using the transparency quite a lot. The, the main tools to remember here is to rotate, uh, transparency, and to scale. Uh, so remember, before we start texturing, we we're going to turn off our details, so we don't want any topology to be modified. So turn off, add, and make sure only RGB is turned on and the intensity is, is at the full there. So if I click on this now, it's not going to let me texture just yet because of the fact that um, this is not a polymesh 3D. So I'm just going to turn that to a poly, make polymesh 3D there. And that should allow me to subdivide more now. So if I subdivide and just make that up as high as possible. So for instance, I'm going to go up to 4 million now, that's enough. The reason for this is it's important is that your model is the highest level because uh, the more higher the detail it is, the more... Uh, nicer your textures or less blurry the textures are going to be in terms of their resolution when you move them across so if I paint that onto the actual plane now you see that from semi-transparent it becomes more like um, um, uh, it's not transparent anymore but that's because when you click on that um, you transferred that detail across now it's important to remember when uh, when you when you switch across in, in order for you to paint onto the plane you have to click Z. So you have to go from uh, the paint mode uh, to the widget mode. So for right now I'm aligning myself. I'm going to hit Z. So when I hit Z, you'll see our 
uh, our brush size up here and instead of the widget the widget will disappear and this brush size appears so when I click that uh, so again I'm just positioning that I'm just making it less transparent and now what I'm gonna do is um, hit Z on my keyboard and you'll see the brush appears and now this allows me to actually paint the texture itself so it's very important that you do that Z to um, Z to go from uh, paint mode to widget mode. So now, if I hit, hit the uh, panel option, you can see that the textures are loaded on the left side, and I can start using them for references uh, when I do my texturing. So that's the main point of doing this. So you can see that this detail has now been projected across onto this model, and I can then take it from there uh, if I want to then further texture uh, uh, for the next part of the tutorial um, so uh, it's in, in what I'm talking about here it is um, the actual the fact that try to use as many pictures as you can in this one we only have front side and uh, three quarter view ideally you, you would want if you were to take your own pictures you would want and uh, to have uh, more pictures from the back of the neck from the side of the neck um, from underneath the chin for instance that's very important um, the close ups uh, of detail and if you remember from the lecture that I did uh, in the past um, we I talked about um, making sure you take all different angles from the top of the head in terms of the textures itself so we're quite limited there but you can still get some decent results but uh, ideally you would want uh, that um, that you, you, you that you can have more textures to play with and make your life a bit more easier so uh, in the next tutorial we're gonna go in and we're gonna uh, start using this and so if you do have your own photographs make sure you correct that so you can see from there there's a bit of highlights there that harsh highlights and you want to kind of flatten that out in this case it's not too much so I've kind of left it in Photoshop play around with the exposures so when you bring in photographs you do clean those up so they're the light is much more balanced so even if you're taking your own photographs go for a balanced approach in terms of the lighting itself so there's no harsh reflections uh, on there because even um, because that usually gives you uh, some errors so if you, if the skin itself is sweaty and uh, wet looking then that's problematic you want to kind of get rid of any highlights see you in the next tutorial